Hello, I'm Garrett, and welcome to the third episode of Making This Pneumatic Engraver. In this episode, I'll be making the sleeve and lock nut. The sleeve threads onto the barrel and keeps the spring that will be in here and the hammer piston from flying out of the back of the barrel. It is also the part that the end cap attaches to. The eight holes here on the top allow air to go from the end cap through the sleeve and into the cavity where the hammer piston rides. The tension on the spring can also be adjusted based on how far down the sleeve is threaded onto the barrel. As the name implies, the lock nut is used to lock the sleeve in place. After the desired amount of tension is set on the spring, the lock nut can be used to keep the sleeve from moving on the barrel. There's a lot of work to do, so let's get started. I'll be using the same bar of bronze I used to make the end cap in the last episode. Loading the bar into the lathe, I can first turn down the outside diameter of the lock nut. This dimension is not critical, but I want to make it as accurate as possible just to continue getting better at using the lathe. With the outside diameter turned down, I will clean up the face of the bar in preparation for drilling. As always, I will start my hole with a center drill. The hole that I am drilling will eventually be this half 20 threaded hole that will thread onto the barrel. The center drill is followed by a couple of drill bits, each stepping up a little bit in diameter. This just makes the drilling go much easier because I am not removing too much material at one time. To tap the hole I could have started with a taper tap instead of a bottoming tap, but the bronze is soft enough I decided a bottom tap would work out just fine, which it did. A quick test fit of the barrel to make sure that the threads turned out well, and I am ready to take the part off the lathe and move to the mill. Using a sharpie, I am marking the location of the bar and the lathe chuck. This will allow me to remount the bar on the lathe in almost the exact same position once I'm done on the mill. On the mill, I will machine these grippy features around the lock nut. I don't know if these are really necessary, but it gives me an excuse to use the hex 5C collet block. For this milling operation, I don't care about the x-axis location. The only critical dimension is the y and z-axis. So I'll use the edge finder to pick up the outside diameter of the lock nut before switching that out for a 1 8 inch end mill and doing a skim pass to quote unquote touch off the Z height. With the mill positioned correctly I can start milling the first groove to a depth of about 30 thousandths of an inch deep. With that first groove cut I'll rotate the bar and then go in and cut the next groove and repeat this another four times to have all six grooves cut. Using that 5C collet block has been so fun. They really open up the possibilities when setting up parts going from the lathe to the mill. Using the sharpie marks from earlier, I remount the lock nut in the lathe and make a small skim pass just to clean up the burrs that were left over from milling. Swapping out the turning tool for the grooving tool, I will make a light skim pass on the end of the part just to clean it up and touch off my grooving tool. Zeroing the dial indicator on the carriage, I can move the grooving tool to the end length of the lock nut and part it off the bar. A quick bit of sanding to clean up both ends of the lock nut and it's done. Once again, I'll be using the same bar of bronze that I've been using this whole time chucked up in the lathe. I will first turn down the outside diameter of the bar to the diameter of the grip section on the sleeve. Just like with the end cap, there isn't a lot of material to remove since the diameter of the bar is just slightly oversized compared to the diameter of the grippy section of the sleeve. Switching to the grooving tool, I first clean up the end of the bar, which allows me to zero the dial indicator on the carriage. This section of the bar that I am turning next is the same diameter of the locking nut. I'm using the grooving tool just to try to get a square corner as I can. My grooving tool insert has a smaller radius on it than that of my normal turning tools. With the first diameter turned, I will now come back behind where the grippy feature will be and turn down this diameter here. This is a critical dimension as this part is where the end cap will be located on later. I measure the internal diameter of the end cap so that I know the diameter I'm turning this to. I want this to be as tight a fit as possible, so I'm being very careful and checking the diameter with the micrometer until the final dimension is reached. I was able to get this diameter to be two thousandths less than that of the end cap, which is perfect. Next, I'm going to drill and tap this half 20 thread in the sleeve. I start the hole with a center drill before moving to a 29 64 drill in preparation for tapping. When drilling this hole, I did not step up the drill sizes like when I was drilling the lock nut. The turning of the bronze had been so easy that I decided to just drill it out to the final drill size. I'll go in with a bottom tap and tap the half 20 threads in the sleeve. 
Bronze is a really lovely material to work with. It's just so soft and makes me feel like I really know what I'm doing. I will again mark the location of the bar inside of the lathe chuck as well as mark the pinion and use to tighten the lathe chuck. With that, I am ready to take the part off of the lathe and move over to the mill to cut the grippy features around the outside of the sleeve here. Just like with the lock nut, I will use the hex 5C call up block to mount the sleeve into the mill. Using the 1 8 inch end mill, I will cut all the grippy features around the outside of the sleeve. Finally getting to use these 5C call up blocks in a project is just so enjoyable. The ability to just rotate the part and be all set up for the next milling operation is a game changer for repetitive features. With the milling of the grippy features complete, I can take the sleeve off the mill and out of the collet block. After a quick inspection, I am happy with how the part is turning out. When I mount the sleeve back into the lathe, I use the sharpen marks to reposition it in the same position it was the first time it was in the lathe. I follow this up by a light skim pass to clean up the burrs left on the grippy features by the mill. This smaller diameter here is the next feature I'll turn. It will later be drilled out and tapped as well for a 1032 thread. This stem gives me more thread engagement for the screw that will attach the end cap to the sleeve. With the outside of that stem turned, I can now drill and tap this hole for 1032 threads. I use the yellow paint marker to mark how deep I want the drill to go. The depth isn't critical, but going too shallow would definitely not be fun. It does usually help to have your drill chuck tightened down all the way before starting to tap a hole. With the drill chuck tightened, I can finish tapping the hole. Finally, I can part the sleeve off using a Q-tip handle to catch it so it doesn't fall and get ruined. But the part isn't done yet. I still need to machine these eight holes that allow air to pass from the end cap through the sleeve and inside the barrel. Using the square 5C call block, I can mount the sleeve back into the mill, this time mounting it vertically. I use a dial indicator to tram the call block, making sure it's perfectly in line with the Z-axis of the mill. Next, I need to locate the mill on top of the stem. I put my drill chuck into the mill and using an indicator clamped to the spindle, locate the mill on the center of the threaded stem. Using a 1 16th inch drill, I start to drill the eight holes. I am being very careful when starting these holes to make sure that the drill doesn't wander off in a weird direction when it first contacts the sleeve. Now it is a simple matter of going around the stem, moving the drill to each hole location, and drilling out the remaining holes. There is a little burr left on the stem from parting it off in the lathe, so I swap my drill chuck for a 3 8 inch end mill and just do a quick skim pass to remove the burr. And with that, the sleeve is complete. Now for the moment of truth. I thread the lock nut and the sleeve onto the barrel for a test fit and the lock nut and sleeve fit perfectly. I can't forget to test fit the end cap, which also fits perfectly. This was a really fun episode. Making these parts with all the different features going back and forth between the lathe and the mill was just really so enjoyable. It's really fun to be able to push the bounds of my skills and to create parts that even a couple years ago, I don't know if I would have even tried to make. Thank you very much for watching. I can't wait to see you again in the next episode.